Yeah. First, we're going to read a little thing from Hoang Po, a great Zen master. So when people hear the mind teaching, meaning the big mind, yeah. When people hear the mind teaching, they get excited. They think there is something to be got. They then fervently engage in this or that practice, thinking that they will get something. And unfortunately, they do not see that their own mind and the thing they expect to find are one and the same thing. Yeah. Well, let's say one and the same, no thing, really. If you use your mind to try to get something from mind, you will never achieve anything, even though you practice like this for billions of years. Wow. Yeah. Why is that? Because this is a supposedly a not non-duality meeting. And the premise of non-duality is being ourselves reality. Yeah. Or being mind ourselves, big M mind, being light ourselves, being the Buddha, ourselves now, you know, here now. That's the fact. Now, all the shenanigans, all the experiences, all the narrations, all the interpretations are not based on that fact. They're based on an assumed fact that we're a long lasting, independent, separate thing. Yes? That has the attributes as a thing of seeing, hearing, feeling, tasting, touching consciousness, that we are what's conscious, this picture of Paul. They're diametrically opposed, yes, in a way. Being ourselves reality and then wanting to find reality from what we're not. Yeah, non-duality, with that assumption, its whole, its whole attention goes to duality. It goes to the assumed fact. Yeah, with the hopes that the fact will make it very clear that the masquerading as fact is an assumed fact. Yeah, it's made up a manufacture. Yeah, not from itself, but from seeing it from what you are. This is the whole point of negation. So non-duality is not two, which is a negation of what? Of duality. Yeah, so you do not, you see the fundamental futility of using what you are to look for what you are, yeah? It just hits, finally, yeah? And what happens, it hits, and then maybe the shit, stick, you know, goes on again, but it's lost some velocity, it's lost some uh, momentum, yeah? And then, basically, these tributaries, these mental tributaries dry up by lack of interest, yeah? They just stop. They don't find their source because the source is here. It's not like a river going to the ocean. Yeah. It's a crazy idea leaving the ocean in a way. So it dries seemingly. It dries up and goes back to the ocean. Yeah. So you're in, the interest and attention that is like the water feeding these tributaries gets dried up. It gets uh, subtracted. It loses interest. So you lose interest in this whole convoluted story of the you, the you that's represented as a body and that is claimed to be the thinker, the feeler, the haver, the loser, the seer, the taster, the toucher. There's just a loss of interest in it. How? Hearing satsang, yeah? You hear satsang based on the assumption you are what you're looking for. As St. Francis says, what's looking is what you're looking for. And this whole dynamic of seeker and sought gets compressed, yeah? The time gets sucked out of it. And it's now the seeker is the sought, yeah? Not, there isn't a seeker and the sought. There isn't the truth seeker and the truth. It gets compressed. The seeker is the sought. The truth seeker is the truth. Yeah? There's no time in there. There's no distance. Time and distance, there's no distance between what you are and what you are. And so it takes no time to get there because you're already there. And on, a, on arriving there, based on a story you've been listening to, 
when you arrive there, it tells you it's on based on having never left. Yeah. It doesn't matter how many times you book a flight and you believe you arrived there. When you arrive there, it tells you on having never left. <laughs> your, your seeming arrival was premised on the fact on having never left. So basically what happens? Stuff gets negated and then that on having never left becomes obvious. Yeah? It becomes obvious. You don't have to go through the whole journey of traveling and going there and then finally arriving at where you wanted to arrive at, only to find out that you had never left. Yeah, you start there. You start on from on having never left. So you don't book any flights. Yeah. <laughs> you don't weigh your bags. <laughs> you know, you, you don't have to worry about the carry-on. Yeah. You're not looking to find the best seat, the most relaxed, easiest, softest way on having never left. It's like a strange logic only because the logic we try to make sense out of everything from is insane. But the logic is seamless. You can't escape from an imaginary place. You can't arrive at where you already are, yeah? You can't use what you are to look for what you are. You can't use the Buddha to seek the Buddha. You can't use light to seek light. You can't use mind to seek mind. That message would only go to mind, Buddha, and light. <laughs> it doesn't go to Art and Paul and Robert, yeah? It it bypasses Robert because Robert, the act of Robiting is the obstruction. I don't want Robert to have an understanding. I don't. I want there to, there to be an understanding that there is no Robert. <laughs> That's what I want that, because that works. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. The beauty of it, that which demands or needs understanding to make the next step is understood not to be us, yeah? So we're not beholden to its requirements anymore. We're not beholden to the only way it can grok things, which is time and space. We're not beholden to it anymore, yeah? We're not tagged with it, yeah? We see what we're not. And how do you see it? Well, I call it selfing, basically. If you go in, if if the attention leaves what you're doing and goes into me any mental activity, you always catch the mental activities in the act of being identified as a self. That's what it is. The whole premise is to reinforce that idea. Of course, there's some value in it. Yeah. It's good to know that I can recognize the nut from the bolt so I can put the nut on the bolt. Yes. It has value. But to be the guide to bring you from where you never to bring you to where you never left, it fails miserably. Yeah? Because it doesn't have here, it has get here. It doesn't have now, maybe in a second, yeah? It doesn't have that instant bang. It always has a little bit of a hiccup. Yeah. And that's where all the shenanigans can fill up. Yeah. Like they always used to say in these cryptic statements in Zen, old Zen, you know, a, a, a movement of the eyelid is like 10,000 miles. Yeah. 10,000 years. Just like that. Yeah. The slightest little, uh, yeah, the whole thing shifts. Yeah. The whole thing. So seemingly it doesn't shift, but seemingly the ride can be so convincing you're you're super clear about what you are until you buy the platinum ticket and then you enter this ride and part of the ride is you think this is on a ride this is the ride this is the ride this is the ride it's not on a ride and get it's the ride this is it it's full of misperceptions fucking wrong direction incredibly faulty assumptions, but with such a surety 
and they're so convinced that you're right when you're terribly wrong. <laughs> Basically, it has no idea what's going on. Yeah, but it can't live with that. Yeah, it has to have an I, I, I know it. Now they're having it a lot in life. People have a, a conclusion and then they make up their own facts to support the conclusion. If you if you reveal that the facts don't matter, it just doesn't matter. It's the conclusion that comes before the facts. They did not arrive at a conclusion. They started at one. This is sort of like selfing. When selfing is going on, it doesn't say, oh, you all of nothing is now entering the phase of becoming self. No, it says you already are one. That's its assumption. When it's thinking about you, the you is historical. It's not like a new you that just came up. It's a historical you. Yeah? And the whole value of worrying about something that you're not in the future is because it's presented as you. Yeah? Could you imagine all the worrying about you and then you realize in this game that it was Stanley <laughs> and you were Paul? You spent 30 years blowing the moment to worry about a Stanley that you don't even know. <laughs> Who wants to hear that news? Who wants to hear the news? We used to have, a, of course, arts here. I'll go to an old story, the Poopa Scoopa story. We used to have an old little story about presenting how the head gets invested with a part of the problem called the solution. <laughs> yeah. So here's this guy who has a beautiful house and a big yard, and he uh, rents out the yard for weddings, and he... They have like lawn bowling tournaments there. And every morning he jumps off the porch with no shoes on and he runs through the morning dew and he, he just loves it. He always has the windows open and he gazes out on this lawn. And then one day he jumps off the porch and he lands on some shit, yeah? So immediately there's gotta be, I've gotta compromise and fit myself around the situation. I go back to the porch, put on some shoes. Now I'm walking around and there's a lot of shit and it smells terribly. And I've got a big lawn bowling, you know, tournament this weekend. What am I going to do? I'm pretty screwed. And so, of course, I just avoid it. I go in the house for a few hours. I go back out. There's more shit, more shit. So I'm really, really concerned. And I'm looking through YouTubes and shit like that. And I get to this guy's uh, video. If here... I have this new model of Poopa Scooper that allows you to pick up more shit for five minutes than any other Poopa Scooper before. So, okay, I ordered that Poopa Scooper and I get pretty good. I'm picking up the shit, but still, basically, the shit's winning out, yeah? I may have by a two by seven foot piece of lawn for a few hours, but by the end of the day, the shit has reigned supreme. But I'm picking, so what I do is I start using two. Scoop pooper scoopers. And I start getting good. And then other people who are having the same problem hear about me and they get in touch with me. And then I get asked to speak at these meetings about picking up shit. And I go there and I give my share and I go by this, by, uh, I say, hey, I've got these pooper scoopers, they're autographed models. I think these are the fastest ones possible. And if you follow my techniques, you'll even do better. So now I've got YouTube shit. I've got autograph fucking pooper scoopers. I'm a circuit speaker talking all around. And so now I think I've got the solution to the problem. There's still a whole lot of shit, but I can, I pick up, I'm pretty good at picking it up. So some one day a guy comes over and says, I hear you have a problem. He says, no, I don't have a problem. I'm like Mr. Solution. I've got people calling me all day to talk about their problem. Guy goes, oh, okay, I thought you had a problem. Well, hey, if you really want a solution, just find the dog. Yeah. And now you would think the guy would just go, he would embrace that solution like that. But because he's invested, the head is invested in its solution, which is managing the shit. It's not that interested in the solution. But if you get rid of the dog, there goes the shit. There goes the garage full of pooper scoopers. 
there goes the autographed, you know, the the leather jacket with Mr. Pooper Scooper on. There goes a lot of shit. But isn't that what you like? Just find the fucking dog. Now, the dilemma is we take ourselves to be the dog. So that possibility of getting rid of the dog is impossible based on the act of being identified as the dog. Even the dog shitting and doing everything, we can't entertain the possibility of being free from it. It's always included in our dreams of freedom. I'm going to be free as the dog, with the dog, by the dog. But in fact, it's freedom from the dog. Yeah. So the whole mental state is in an act of identification. Yeah as this sense of being a long-lasting, independent, separate entity. That's why we don't want you to hear the message, because that's the obstruction. We're trying to get around you to hit what's really there, yeah? And I can't miss it because it's everywhere. So I can throw this way, that doesn't matter. All I got to do is get around you, yeah? So when what you are hears this message, it now has a view of what it's not. It sees what it used to take to be just a reminder of what it was. And it now sees that it may not be that, yeah? That is the direction of negation. That's the way it goes, yeah? So now suddenly the understanding of non-duality is like a pair of glasses you put on. And through those glasses, you see the understandings that are the foundation of this life, and you see how misunderstanding they are. Yeah. And so what happens? There's a loss of interest. There's a loss of interest. And suddenly, the interest and attention is being withdrawn from the story of Paul, and now is enriching your day, enriching your day. Yeah. You're awake all day. You're here. You don't get gypped. You're not dwelling in what's not happening. Yeah, you're here. You can see false evidence before it appears real. Yeah, because you're before it all. Now, that whole idea of you needing to be liberated, you're liberated from that idea completely. You lose complete interest in seeking. Yeah, because it's so freaking absurd if you are what you're looking for. <laughs> I mean, what would be the first thing that would be damaged by that recognition? The looking for it, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> if someone point, you know, tapped you on the shoulder and you got the message, hey, bro, you are what you're looking for. I would think the looking for would take a very, very quick turn. Yeah. <laughs> now there may be an enjoying of finding it. Yeah. Not even finding it, being it. Yeah. And that to me is the, is the basis of traveling lighter. It doesn't change everything, but it allows you to travel lighter with whatever, whatever, with whatever life has in store for us. Yeah. And after a while, what more do you really want as this action figure? You're not going to be a chariot of the gods. I don't think there's a, there's a golf course in heaven. I don't. I don't think you're going to be bowling on Friday nights, you know, buffalo uh, chicken wings on Tuesday. There's, you're not going to be eating and, yeah. <laughs> you're going to, this whole mortal coil is going to be dismissed as if it never happened. Don't you ever think, you know, this is a huge production for just an 80 year show. Yeah. You're going to maybe die at 80 years. Uh, Jesus Christ. It seems like it went way out of proportion. If you are the one. <laughs> Tons of things here outlast us. Fucking tortoises outlast us. <laughs> we come and go before the tortoise ends. <laughs> so, so, yes. 
The difference between thinking and my thinking. Just weigh it out. Feel it. I know suddenly a thought has the great ability of ruining your day if it's preceded by my thought. Yeah, I can, I can guarantee you. Yeah, if it's seen as a thought, suddenly, miraculously, it doesn't seem to have the power to ruin your day. How did that happen? I think it's on our end, not the thought's end. Yeah, I think we're giving meaning to the thought, not the thought giving meaning to us. <laughs> Uh, all right, so I'm happy to be here on a Wednesday night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Negation is sort of like taking apart a piece of furniture. Yeah. The furniture looks solid, doesn't it? It does. You look at it. But then when you look closer, there's screws holding the parts together. Yeah. And then if you have the right understanding or the right tool, let's say you have a drill and you have it put, yeah, the negative way, pulling the screws out, not the positive, reinforcing the screw. You take a couple of screws out and then the integrity of the piece of furniture you thought was a chair is lost, yeah? Something is moved and now you're seeing there's five parts to this chair. At first you just saw a chair, yeah? They take out another screw, the whole thing loosens up and a whole side falls off. And then you see the reverse engineering of the house of cards. Yeah. You think they're all connected and, and entwined, but they're not. There's basic screws. If you take four screws out, you just destroy the seeming integrity of the whole piece of furniture. Yeah. Four simple understandings that aren't true. You pull them out. You don't put another screw in there you take the one screw out and you leave it at that. Let the fucking thing collapse. All the while you thought it was a chair, but was it? Was it? This is the same as satsang, same as non-duality. Yeah? First of all, the magic trick is of time. Something that comes after, which is the idea of you being the doer, the feeler, the thinker, the taster, after thoughts, feelings, and sensations have been noticed, that feeling of you that's pictured as a body comes after the conscious contact. There's seeing, yeah? There's hearing, and there's the thing that saw, the thing that was heard. The idea of you as the hearer comes after. You don't believe me? Take the simple example of a lot of people when you're having conversations with them. They have a feeling and then they say, I didn't want to feel that. Yeah. Did they come before the feeling or after the feeling? A feeling happens, an opinion arises. The opinion is is attached to this image of being the one, yeah? And now the one in its powerlessness goes, oh, I didn't want to feel that, but it felt it already, yes? Do you need 800,000 examples? Just use one, yeah? What was there before you didn't want to have the feeling that was noticed? What was there? Was it anyone other than us? Yeah? So doesn't it seem like the idea of Paul is on a time lag? That there's contact and then there's like a pause and something goes on without us noticing it. And then the reaction that I didn't like that feeling comes up. Yet, 
the feel the I didn't like that feeling is obviously after, but the, the assumption is so stubborn, it still assumes that you were before, that you were before the feeling. That's the fucking magic trick. But there's no you there. All there is is awareness. There was an awareness of a sensation. The mental state arose, claimed it, and, re- and told a story about it. And the story is so cognitively misapplied, the assumption is you have a lot of power and your experience is you don't. As the feeler, I should be able to feel what I want and not feel what I like, and yet you always end up, I didn't want to feel that. <laughs> You don't need a week of a retreat. You need five five minutes. You don't have to go and get a major operation. The, the diagnosis is right in the waiting room <laughs> right now. This is it. <laughs> this is it. Yeah? We are conscious contact. We are. Yeah? The narration is about something after conscious contact. And it swears we're that. (laughs) And it ain't going to lead you to the promised land. You have to see you're not that. Yeah. If you think it's going to go along with your gain, you know, your journey, it's not a service animal. It's like a snake. Its nature is, or like a parasitical movement. Its nature is to, in a parasitical relationship, There's a winner and a loser. It's not a win-win situation usually. In nature, sometimes there's a symbiotic thing, but mostly the parasite lives off the host. And and as it does, the host gets weakened. Yeah. So in this lovely case, there is no parasite and there is no host, but it's a nice way of imaging it. Yeah. So yeah, that's it for today, I guess. Release the Krakens. Al has a, a very appropriate appropriate uh, a profile picture. Oh, he just took it off. Did you see it? It was it's a Marty Feldman with <laughs> like kind of like your dog with the ears cocked. Like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> the transmission or whatever happens at these zooms isn't based on understanding. That's for sure. <laughs> It isn't. So it will lead to an understanding, but it's not based on an understanding. Uh, and there's no hands showing. Anybody want to raise their hand? I can read another thing because I like uh, these old Zen guys. Oh, shit. I'm at the bottom of the page. Fuck. Oh, it's okay. All right. Can I read another thing then? Uh, Gary C. put up his hand, so you can ask uh, him. <laughs> Where are you? But you can still read another thing. Oh, it's okay. I'll get back to it after you. All right. <clears throat> well, I, I was just struck by the story of the the pooper scooper, because um, <clears throat> I think a lot of times I'm I'm like coming to satsang to become a better pooper scooper you know i i i can just see this if i just if i just can nail this i will you know i'll be the best and so and then just, what <laughs> i don't know i'll get a gold star from somebody the best and then what? yeah uh i hadn't <laughs> thought beyond that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I sure it, I, I'm sure it means I'll feel a lot different than I think I'm feeling now. <laughs> yeah, it'll get better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll get a prize or something. <laughs> and, you know. That's right. I'll have mm-hmm. something I don't have now. Isn't that the case really? Yeah, yeah. Isn't the chase of the carrot premised on a belief you don't have what that prom that carrot is promising? 
Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you get to the best, and then there'll be the better of the best, and the supreme best, <laughs> and the super supreme best. <laughs> Seeking's point isn't to stop and find. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. We take believe that but that's not its point its point is seeking it has it's actually trying to elude any finding <laughs> because that may prohibit the urge to seek again <laughs> put it out of business yeah exactly so it's not in the finding business it's in the <laughs> <seeking business>. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'd be the best if I get this. And then what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just like the guy who with the, finally gets the couch. And then once he gets the couch, he realizes it needs to get a matching rug. And then there he goes again. So there's always a mythical there that's implied to be better than here. But it always is here when you arrive there. <laughs> So it needs another there to arrive. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> how endless is that? Well, hopefully here it's it it does come to an end. Hopefully, mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, that's part mm. of the value of satsang. I feel this shit. This is like a tributary. It dries up. Yeah, you see the futility of it, and interest and intention is withdrawn. The interest and attention goes somewhere else, probably in, in, to enriching your day. In it, you know, to enriching the here instead of being absorbed in the mythical there. Yeah. Mm. Really. Mm. I mean, what is so lacking when you're looking for a future is the present. Yeah. That's the cost. You get absorbed in how you think it's going to be, and it's basically, it's not going to be the way I feel now. And then there's an incredible frustration when you arrive at the myth mythical there. It may be enjoyed for a few seconds or a minute or maybe a day, and then you're on the horse riding again. Where your head is. Yeah, it's yeah. agitated. You see, the head is agitated. It can't rest. Even if it went to the oasis of peace, it would get worried about getting kicked out or something. It can't enjoy shit. Hmm. Yeah. It's not still. It's agitated. Yeah, that's its nature. So yeah. you're never going to train it to be still. Well, who would be training it to be still? An agitated trainer. <laughs> What's the agitated trainer going to pass to its student? Agitation around not being still. <laughs> you can't win. That's the Course of Miracles calls it unhealed healers. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, but it's probably a better business plan. You know, you probably could keep getting a lot of new people in your plan and selling your product because it's endless but it's well, not very yeah. happy yeah but this would have to be a business i don't see it as a business no no, no. you're giving it away as it should be yeah yeah, yeah it comes free you have it by giving it away, as we say in recovery. The richest I ever am is when I'm giving it away. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm certainly enriched by your giving it away. Things you hear, I think Jesus said, you know, uh, put the kingdom of heaven first and all things will be added unto you. That's sort of my business plan. Hmm. You know what I mean? I do. I feel like 
you know, if you move to do something like this, you'll be taken care of. Yeah. And it's proven to be true. Yeah. So, well, I'm grateful for it. I mean, it's, you know how they say we can make mountains out of molehills, yeah? Mm hmm Can you imagine that power to make mountains out of molehills when it meets mountains, yeah? What a humility and a reverence will kick in. And this little, this activity of, of what we actually are, uh, you would be humble around you would see how powerful this event is that we can make shit out of nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, when Jesus brought Lazarus back from the dead, Lazarus had been alive at one point. We make shit out of nothing. That, that's an incredible power, don't you think? Now, could you imagine if that power was matched with something or that is true? Instead of just making false evidence appear real all day, what would it do when it ran into real evidence? I think there would be a humility and a fucking honoring and an awe, and maybe it would be put to better use instead of being directed by the mental state. Yeah. Yeah. That's how I see this life. You know, I saw when I was out there using. When I first started to drink, I realized I had magnetic appeal to people in uniform. It's sort of like I put out a dog whistle and people could almost smell me and I get arrested like unbelievably in weird ways. Yeah. But I had a suspicion that there's a powerful light somehow going off and whatever's directing it is fucking jackpotting me every freaking day. Yeah. I better fucking surrender that and let something else that can wield and direct light do a better job with it than the mental condition. Yeah. And mm. that was what happened in the way of life of recovery. We have a, 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 an idea of turning one's will in life over to the care of a higher power. What is your will in life? It's faith and manifestation, really. I've seen what the mental state can do with faith and what it can manifest. When I have faith in false evidence, a lot of shit can happen, yeah? But now in, in the act of surrender, and I mean really having a sense of it, that you're turning the key to the lighthouse over. So that lighthouse, light, that light can be redirected, yeah? Yeah? Yeah. So now maybe the light's directed on a hummingbird landing or uh, noticing that Brahmi hasn't been here or something like that. Yes, it starts being used in a completely different manner than it was used before. It's quite noticeable. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so Paul, would you say this is a gradual? transition you know, i i've listened to you for a lot and 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 i i hear the message and i also notice there's somebody who's trying to claim it and use it to make something better and i also notice that my life has gotten lighter it's gotten easier in a lot of ways and and i'm very blessed by that and I don't know, and the question still comes up. It's like, yeah. and I recognize it at the same time. You know, what can I do to make it better, or you know, how can I improve? And and I hear all the answers, but you know, that's why my question is: Is this a gradual thing? Is it progressive, like you sometimes say in recovery? Um, it's not anything. It can be any way it wants. Yeah. But if you feel like you want to make it better, why not be available to help others, someone else get better? Yeah. yeah. Put that desire uh, to service to others. Mm. It'll be mm. much more rewarding. Yes, it will. Yeah. Really. 
Yeah. Oh, thanks. I've never seen, I told you this story many times, but when my mom got old, my other family members put her in a senior citizen home, yeah, because she would pass out in the wheelchair in her apartment and she couldn't get to the phone and everything. And she's starting to have a lot of anxiety. Yeah. So there she was in that condition in that apartment and it promoted a lot of anxiety. She was taken out of that condition, put into another condition that they brought food morning, noon, night. When she buzzed, someone showed up. And she quickly got over those anxieties, yes? Okay. But I would go visit her a lot. And she'd always want me to bring beer, but I wouldn't because <laughs> one beer would lead to another beer. So, uh, and I saw her and a lot of times she didn't look good. And one day I went there and she, they wheeled her out and she was super bright. And I said, Mom, what, what are you doing? What were you doing? And she says, I've been always, oh, I was on my phone tree calling up all these people who they call them shut ins. They're not in programs, they're in their own house, but there's no one there, right? Mm -hmm. So she had people she'd call up every Saturday. And by just ta contacting them, she just put on the lights, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I saw many, many, many times, but in that one time, the, the act of service and what it does for the one who's in the act of service or what's mm. in the act of service, yeah? Because this was a, my mother, you know, important uh, role in this life, and uh, she was bright as hell, so, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so when you stop worrying about you getting great, you may be available to help others, yes? Sort of cool. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. The funniest thing, uh, you know, when people talk about humility, if you've been if you've been struck by it, there's no idea that you're being humble. Yeah, that's part of the humility. <laughs> there's no there's not an emphasis on the one noticing that they're humble. That's the whole mm -hmm. point of. The the message is you lose interest in how Paul is doing. If Paul has hit, hit a level of okayness, it's best, you know, check in every few days, so to speak. You're not every two minutes checking the pulse of how Paul feels. Yeah. You've lost interest in Paul. <laughs> and it's probably the best thing for Paul. <laughs> you don't know how mutated the mental state is. When the mental state obsesses over something, it twists that something. <laughs> it does. Mm. It does weird shit. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, looking at that bug and wanting to see the, the colors and the things on the back of it. So I went in and got a magnifying glass and no idea about the sun moving and the earth moving. I was looking at the bug and then the sun got behind my shoulder. And while I was looking at the bug, the sun was getting magnified and just fucking killed the bug. Hmm. Yeah. That's sort of like the mental obsession with self. <laughs> it's, uh, it needs to be pared down a lot man so this whole point is really based on a loss of interest mm. Mm. and gaining of interest but it's necessary for a loss of interest yeah there's got it like in a lot of the results of recovery and, and aa are premised on this pivot point which is you lose interest in self that's the key yeah because if you want, if you try to lose interest as self, that's interest in self. Yeah. Yeah. There's got to be a loss of interest in self. Yeah. Yeah. And self can't do that. That's what satsang triggers. Yes. Yeah. And what's the easiest way of to lose interest in something? To see it as not you, really. It's the sense that it's you that keeps your eye on that ball all day. 
Yeah. When he, if you see it's not you, you let it roll the way it goes. Yeah. Yeah. The mm. managing, controlling just gets released. You, you're not that interested in the ball. You know it's rolling. The action figure is going to do shit. In action, it has a destiny. It has a fate. It's going to meet things. It's going to do things. It's got a momentum. You don't have to be pushing it, and trying to pray it goes this way or that way. Let it roll, mm. as they say. Yeah, that sounds yeah. interesting. Well, it works. I've been in that experiment for years. Mm. I mean, years. Yeah, there's not a map for the trajectory of the action figure. It's not like. All right, the next 50 miles are already set. The bunk, the bumpers are in place. No, it just rolls. Yeah. 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 I have faith in what's blowing, what the momentum of it. Yeah. Why wouldn't I? I have a definitely a definite sense that something in from here that something whatever that may be has done for me what I can't do for myself. Mm. It's just fucking super clear. It's like a, it's like it's not like it's always amazing, but it's not surprising anymore. But it's always amazing, but it's not surprising. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's fake. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, so. Hmm. You know, that which wants to arrive at the best is the best already. Yeah. You are what you're looking for. <laughs> really. Right now. And you know, maybe you don't believe that, and that's not you, but you fall into it. You'll be, there'll be a believing in it because it's, it's true. Yeah. Mm. It delivers the goods. Mm. It doesn't, it's, it's fumes aren't hope. It's, it's, it produces goods. It produces effects. Yeah. It's reliable. Mm. Yeah. It's almost as if, like when you were a kid and if you had a grandma, my grandmother, Nana, lived with us. And I never ever had a thought that she wasn't reliable. And she always proved to be incredibly reliable. I loved her like a goddess, really. Yeah. Well, in a weird sense, it's like that for that which is moving this whole place. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, nice to see you, Gary. Nice yeah. to see you, too. Thanks. Thanks, Gary. Thanks for sharing your square. Um, there were a couple hands up, but they went down. So, there's Maria. The Maria. Hi, Maria. I know exactly where she is because I've, I've gone in a house when she wasn't there. <laughs> Maria. Anyone have a question or a share? How are you? Everything, everything's all right there? Uh, I, I, if, I'll try to come up with a share. Yeah, I'm doing okay, Paul. It's really great to see you. Oh, good. All good. right. Yeah. Moving on. That's great. Anyone else? Oh, there's a new, nice to see you, Johannes, Maria, Gary C. Gary's and going all Art, Art, Art put his hand back up. <laughs> Gary's like disappearing. It's cool. I, I can see through Gary now. Gary C. Seriously. Huh. Hey, I got myself unmuted somehow, so I'm going to share a little bit. All right, Art. Go uh, ahead. Good, good to see you, Paul. Um, yeah. Good to check in and, and reaffirm some things that 
that guide me pretty well. Um, I, I just was thinking about how many times I've repeated over the years, I'm not that. Uh, it's, it's frankly that simple as a practice. And, and, and then the question about whether, whether it's a, a gradual or a sudden thing, I, I couldn't honestly say um, the recognition that, um, because it seems to be to me sort of a continuum um you know it's, it, there's no toggle switch it just kind of happens and i i couldn't pinpoint a time or an event or or anything like that um you know it, it kind of com comes along with this con this continual recognition that it's always right now um and, and none of this other shit that's the narrative um has has any meaning once you you see it for what it is. It just kind of evaporates, um, you know. And 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 I like the idea of the discussion about the, the power of the narrative and what it can do. And and I just thought of a what I thought was a funny joke that I might as well tell it. But that, that narrative gives me the the immense power to pull vault over a mouse turd. Um, you know, it 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 can. It can make something and then it can show me a way to, to conquer that one thing. And then, you know, the, the real thing, and I, you, you said it years ago to me, Paul, is that the best way out of something is to realize that we're never in it. And then, then the, whole, the whole narrative and all, all that complex bullshit that was going on just sort of evaporates. And my experience is kind of that over, over a period of time for me, it just has gotten easier to um, to separate from from that from that burden of of selfing. It just kind of as long as I keep you know reminding or being reminded and doing some pretty simple practices around it, it it's it keeps going. Um, and then, and that's good to hear the uh, pooper scooper story. That's that story has aged well. It's gotten some good embellishments on it, and um, but the message is still pretty solid. So that was good. And uh, yeah, I'm just pleased to be here and to, to be part of this collective. And um, other than that, uh, good to see you, Paul. And uh, that's all from me. Well, keep coming back, Art. It's nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to mute the mute you there, Art. I said keep coming back to Art, yeah. Yeah, the... Uh... All of those stories, all those the little poopa scoopers, they came from some kind of drive to, you know, communicate, really. <laughs> basically you know the best way to communicate i feel is through imagery so shit's a pretty good image yeah shit dog scooper <laughs> yeah <laughs> but there's some subtlety to it where the person the head not the person the head gets uh invested in it in its solution where it has a, a resistance to another solution yes yeah hmm. all right anyone else says stacy yeah yeah, yeah. Nice uh dave b but i wanted to thank art too for the the uh, mouse turd pole vaulting that's great <laughs> that's good Go ahead, I didn't Dave. Hear that at all. That's why I couldn't laugh much. I didn't hear the pole vault. I heard the mouse yeah. turn. It sounded like he pulled a blanket over the mouse turn or something. I don't know. I missed the. I missed the uh, whatever. The pole vault. Yeah. Yeah. He just like like the action figure of being all all excited that he could pull vault, but it was just a mouse turn. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. You ready for Dave B? David B. Grateful Dave. Uh, what's up, Paul? Uh, thanks. You got great like, Dave. Yeah, I changed my name back. I'm I'm oscillating between uh, my alter ego and my my 
true self. Uh, so I don't know if I have a question. I have a little story. Um, there might be a question in there if you tell me I'm delusional. <laughs> but uh, so the other day I had a friend, um, you know, he's in a non-duality and, um, you know, good, good buddy. And he said, you know, why don't you get some direct pointing sessions from this other non-dualist on YouTube or whatever? And I said, you know, I said, I like this person, but uh, I said, you know, whatever it was, I said, uh, Paul Hederman pointed to whatever I needed to see. You know, I experienced this flash moment a couple, couple days after listening to your talks. And the guy said uh, to me, and, you know, I've been struggling since then because I want to get that back. Right. That's it's like this is a new addiction. Right. And then the guy said to me, he said, oh, so you got the message. And I said, yeah. And he said, well, then hang up the phone. And in that instant, it was just this massive download, man. It just hit me like a ton of bricks. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, you gave me a ring and it's been on my finger and I've been looking everywhere for it, you know. And somebody just said, dude, it's on your finger. And yeah. um, I just want to share that with you. And I, I love you and appreciate you, Paul, for sure. You know, you do oh, good, great. good work for all of us. Well, thanks, man. I'm happy. Uh, yeah, you found the uh, non-missing ring. <laughs> I'll probably lose it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, that's the <laughs> that's the game, the mental game of hide and seek. It hides the obvious and then seeks for it as exotic. <laughs> it much rather seek for an exotic thing than to find the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was those things they used to have the power rings you just didn't want a ring you wanted a power ring <laughs> that's what like a mood ring or something uh, a power ring like there was a, some some uh super thing had yeah, power a, rings. green yeah, lantern power, the rangers oh, yeah. there was power super, rangers yeah Power rangers, didn't they have power rings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you what's go. great? It what's great is what you gave me was nothing, you know. Which that's yeah, a that's a lot. That's a load. That. <laughs> There's a load off that. of <laughs> nothing is a good thing for a very full mind, you know. So yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. You cannot lose nothing. It's great. All those worries and concerns of losing finding because you can't find nothing either can you <laughs> nothing is the immune to losing and finding it's, it's like the head the head wants to tell you you lost it all day long now you're like <laughs> how, can, how can i lose nothing i have no idea that's <laughs> but, exactly right see that's where you see the emperor with no clothes see it goes into his losing and finding yet it it gets put into stark contrast when nothing is the uh, is the topic yeah that's the beauty of non-duality the beauty of non-duality reveals pulls the curtain on finding and losing nothing nothing negates finding nothing negates losing it's beautiful isn't it as soon as it becomes something the possibility of finding it and the stronger possibility of losing it comes into play. Yeah. And then you're in the fucking jungle after that. Then you need some fucking mystical machete to try to cut yourself out of it. But before you enter there, nothing negates losing and finding beautifully. Yes. Mm. Completely puts an end to it. There's no moment you've lost it, and there's no moment you'll find it. None. It is. Period. All the willing and wasing and this and that doesn't change the fact. It is. Yeah? When you think it's lost, nothing. When you think it's found, nothing. When you think it's lost again, nothing. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Nothing, uh, I... nothing else responds like that. Nothing else. 
the, if you have the, that special knife, then you lose the knife, and then you lose your powers, and someone gets finds the knife and uses it against you. All the stories erupt out of that, but nothing puts everything to a, an end before it begins. No losing, no finding. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. The download came with a, a cosmic joke of having never left, you know, it delivered yeah. that one pretty, pretty heavy. And it also, it, it seemed to whisper that, you know, I don't know what else to call white light experience, but it's been a month or two since that. And uh, it came through and, and kind of gave me that too. And just said, you are what you're looking, this is what you're looking for. And, you know, you don't need a, don't keep looking for a bigger white light, right? Like it just, be here hmm. now right you know well the thing I is mean, just see you're not that which says it's looking for a bigger light because it's going right. to do that see right. you don't it's going to do it yeah this whole idea of thinking it's us and we're gonna educate it or control it or give it up it's pointless it's not you it's mechanical yeah so it gets a hit of a big light. It wants a bigger light. Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. the hell? Yeah. 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 Well, when when they they say it's a free preview, you know, they they it's a setup for looking for the next one. <laughs> it's and a, it did. But, it's a beautiful though because that which is looking for the next one and the looking for the next one is not you. So, yeah. all the while, everything that's happening is 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 giving you that pointer. It's not you. Yeah? Clear. Yeah. So, great. I mean, sometimes it's the big light experiences that brings it out of the weeds so you can really see it. To see it's, the, it's, it's dualistic, like a slinky move, yeah? Find, lose, have, get, ba, da, yeah? And then you see it finally, because you're not of it. You're not of a dualistic movement. That's why you can see it clearly. Yeah? That's why you can see it clearly. You're not of it. Yeah? So this isn't... The greatest one, one of the best stories by Ramana, you can find it in his... The Talks of Ramana Maharshi about the woman with the ring or the necklace and then you know thinking she lost the necklace and then feeling all these terrible feelings believing the loss of the neck necklace was the cause of those feelings and then she went on a great hunt to find it and enlisted a lot of people and saw masters who had said they had found a necklace and then they can teach you how to find a necklace and then finally, someone just says, hey, why don't you take a second to feel around your neck? And there was the necklace. And yet the stubbornness of the narrative was she finally believed she found it. Not the reaction, the, uh, not the clear uh, seeing of on having never left. No, I found the necklace. And now she feels great because she found it. But it had never been lost. The whole thing was dreaming. Yes? The whole thing, the setup, the losing and finding was dreaming. The necklace has always been there. It never went anywhere. And it never was restored to that rightful place on the neck. It was always there at all times. But the narrative is rooted in its loss so there can be a search to find. Yeah? Well, go ahead. You can do that with necklaces and rings, but you can't do it with what you are. I don't give a shit what you think. You haven't lost what you are, and you're not going to find what you are. You always are what you are, no matter how much you're thinking it's different. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Something new better to give you any real power to leave what you are. It's all imaginary. Yeah. You get exhausted, just like the great parable of the prodigal son. 
where that guy leaves a nice situation, goes out, gets fucked up, screws everything up, feels guilty about it because, of course, he thinks he's the doer. And, and he ends up living on a bottom and he ends up one day in a pigsty fighting pigs for a cob of corn. And then that moment he gives up. He, you know, he just fucking gives up. And then there's no story from that point to meeting his father on the road and getting some new clothes and a ring and then brought to an incredible feast. There's no story of what the person had to do to get there. To, no, it immediately goes right to meeting his father on the road. Yeah. Getting the invitation to dinner, some new clothes and a ring. Yeah, there was nothing to clean up. There was nothing to undo. It was just a recognition. Fuck, I'm over it. And then bam Yeah, we have the story about heaven's door, the same thing. There, there's a, something that's implied in these, these parables. Yeah, you're that which you're looking for. And you're that which you may not be looking for. It's just, you're that. Do you think this thing can really blow down that house with all the huffing and puffing? It may be able to, you know, make mountains out of whole molehills, but it can't make uh, untruths out of truth. It can only seemingly, seemingly avoid, distract from, deny truth. It can't change shit. Yeah? It can't change it. If you want assurance, I don't know how much assurance you can have than that. That you can't screw this up. (laughs) It's beautiful. So, yeah. It's a great story, that one. Also in that story, he talks about uh, this, this that you want to realize is always realized. So there's no, no realize, no realize, no realize, then a realization. It's always realized. Yeah. You believing in time, you're not in it. And then suddenly you're thrust in it. And then you say, I've had a realization, but that realization is always realized. Yeah? It's the open secret, the gateless gate. At every moment of time, the gate is open. The secret is open. Yes? Yeah. So, hey, anyone? Uh, no Thanks, other Paul. hands up. Thanks, Dave. What's to- What's the time here? Oh, weird. Eleven fifteen. You want to say goodbye or everything? I almost dropped everybody. See, it's funny. I just dropped Harry, Maria, Gary, and none of them got hurt. Hmm. <laughs> All right, so let me, uh, Hari, it's always a pleasure. Stay in touch. I plan on it. Yes, please. I just texted uh, Amelia today. Oh, come, come, you can come down here, stay in, at the, in our camper. I'm thinking about it. It's sweet. I'll even bring down the, uh, you know, the, the cost. Yeah. <laughs> For friends and family. <laughs> we got Maria. Nice to see Maria. Nice to see you, honey. We had a lovely stay up at Maria's place. Very nice. Thank you, Paul. Always good to be here. Yes. Nice to see you, honey. Good to see you always. Gary? Gary, you're going to be the invisible man to me. Yeah. You're getting translucent. We got David B. Nice to see you, Dave. No jail, no hospital. It's a great day. Yeah. We got John R. My Aussie friend. Yes. There he is. Yeah. 
I think the pooper scooper was um, the bitch slap. Oh, um, good. Yeah, it was for me. That that was. And um, I've been listening to the dog bark for years, not being able to, or, or listening to the dog, and then it was seen. Yes. Yeah. The pants were Great. down, as it were. Somebody said to me one day in a meeting, um, you've spent a lot of years looking for God or seeking God, and God was never lost. And that had a similar effect. Um, yes. Yeah. But thank you. All that's needed with that is the understanding to recognize that that which was stunned by hearing that has shown back up and claimed to be the hero of it. Yeah. yeah. It's important to have that follow up understanding because yeah. after, after the thief is subdued, it gets out of the handcuffs and plays the role of the policeman. <laughs> yeah. 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 My policeman is pretty, pretty flexible. Yeah. yeah, he's on the yeah. take. I think. I think he's on the take. Yeah, yeah. he's corrupt. Yes, <laughs> his cousin Vinny, who's the thief. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's his brother. Yeah. All right, bro. Nice to see you. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. We got Al from Vegas. Nice Hi. to see you, Al. I liked it when you drop in. Yeah. I had a incident yesterday. I'm not sure about one. I'll just let her let her rip. Um, self had its way with me. Self wouldn't be, or God wouldn't be denied. Whoever you want to face it, you know. I made a I made a vow a long time ago. Friend posted some time ago. You know, I turn my will and my life over to this power. Why am I surprised when things change? You know, why why am I surprised? I made a solemn vow more than once. Uh, very, uh, very s sincerely, and uh, I was in a doctor's office yesterday, and they asked you some questions, and something kind of slipped out about being a little sad, and, uh, you know, they get very alarmed when they hear that over there. It's not like one of these groups where I can talk about depression or having, uh, what's the word, self-destructive thoughts. So uh, the cat came out of the bag, and they want to, you know, send me to the hospital. I said, well, no, you don't understand. This is a good thing. This is a very good thing for me to confess this out loud, to let this see the light of day. Mm. Uh, I don't want to be one of those 30-year guys that goes kaboom. Um, and uh, I had a pass muster with three people. It, it was almost, it was tantamount to admitting I had a little drink and, and et cetera problem. It was right there with that. And mm. uh, I treated myself real well today, including a visit to uh, this meeting. You know, I, I did a lot of comfort foods and uh, and uh, celebrating being alive today and, and letting the truth uh, come out. And uh, so I'm very excited about it and, uh, in a good way that I can own this side of me that I was so busy keeping busy, uh, helping others and and, and denying this truth within me that finally uh, I couldn't, you know, Yellowstone blows up every, yeah. And, and finally I couldn't just deny it any longer. So yeah, I appreciate Mike seeing my uh, Marty Feldman and my Yoda shit, but uh, I ain't all this, I ain't that bunch of a shit. Uh, 14 years sober, I had the realization after hearing it for 14 months <clears throat> pardon me self doesn't reveal self to self and i had to hear that for 14 months three times a week before mm. it hit oh shit i am so lost in self that i couldn't see how lost i was i'll wrap with this one while you were talking i was thinking of one divided by one i don't know why it came to me one divided by one and i've been the divisive element the, the divisive element within my own self you know one divided by one is one one divided by zero is, i'm always going to come back to one but it, can i can i recognize it from the top with the maybe with the little hat on the one and the, the foot on the one i want a complete one i don't want just a, a hash mark hash got me here so that that's uh that's all for me and uh 
I do thank you as well, Paul. I hope I can make it back if I can remember to see you again. Thank you all. Nice to see you, Al. Say hello to Yoda and Albert back there. Yes. Hey, uh, we got Angie. There she is. That's a strange shot, Angie. The the background's blurred. That's sort of cool. Uh, 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 as is the reality, blurring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Reality's blurring. Well, it is. Yeah. Any blurring reality ain't reality. Wow. <laughs> All right, we've got Paul Hedeman at the kitchen. <laughs> I, Paul's looking really good. I haven't seen Paul that good in a while. All right. <laughs> we got Anish. Oh, Anish, we're so happy. You know, if anything came out of that day talking at that conference, meeting you is was more than enough. It was very, very nice. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Very nice. I want to tell you, really, I appreciate it, Anish. And, uh, you know, the aspect of the spirituality that becomes very heavy, you're going to travel a, light, a lot lighter through it. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. You're like the guy on the train. You can put the bag down. Thank you, Paul. Thank you yeah. so much. Thank you. Yes. yes. We got Brahmi, Brahmi, Brahmi. I'm, uh, my <clears throat> umbilical cord is tingling. I'm picking up Brahmi a little. Hey, honey, if any time you ever need to talk to anyone, just call me. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just take you up on that invitation. Yeah, please. You know, coming from India and then coming back here. You know, yeah. Yeah, yep. it's interesting. Yes. <laughs> but I, I keep vibing you, so. All right. I'll talk to you. Yeah, or yes. we'll talk here. Yeah, yeah. All right, we got Deborah. Nice to see Deborah. There she is. John R. again. We got uh, Dave B. Let's see who else. Uh, we've got Mandy, Lucas, Sue. Uh, let's see who else is here. We've got, let's go back. We've got, we got them. Mike, thank you so much. We got Bill C, the retired Captain Kirk. We got David and his, uh, the lovely other there. Yeah. Oh, then there's, uh, the dog. Yes, there he is. Or she. Yeah. David see you. and Stephanie. David um, and Stephanie are the dog's name. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, I'm really happy to to have met you, and thanks for coming, bro. And your lovely friend, and the dogs, and everyone. Yeah. Uh, thanks, thank yeah. you, Paul. Like, yeah, I, 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 work, I, I can't come up with words to thank you enough for myself. It's great. Yeah, thank you. All right, always a pleasure. All right. From those days, uh, boogie board in a Cronkite. <laughs> yeah. We got John K. John K. Took a long sabbatical. I'm happy to see him. He's graced us with his lovely presence. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Nice to see you, John. Stuart, another ASEAN. Yeah. I've got, my, I've got uh, the Aussie group. I love them all. We got Kathleen. Kathleen's taking it easy. Yes. We got Linda. Linda, did you get a haircut there? Yeah, you're looking pretty stylish. Yes, I did. Yes. A summer haircut. Look very nice, Linda. Thank you. We got Robert, my favorite Kiwi. We're gonna I'm gonna threaten Robert. We gotta come to New Zealand, so I'm gonna have to run into you, Robert. Yeah. yeah anytime, Paul. Thank yeah. You. I mean, seriously, I have I only had a layover there once for four days. I really wanted to go back to New Zealand. So, yeah, Look we'll see each other. Yeah. We got James iPhone. Nice to see you, James. Yeah. I don't know if he's James, but I'm waving to him. Yo, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm unmuting. Uh, I'm in love. I'm in love with the message. 
kind of struggling right now, but it doesn't really matter. I, I listen to your stuff for a long time. I'm Evan. I'm the guy that yeah, beat oh, your, Evan. Yeah, 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 my friend. I'm Evan that believe, beat your beloved uh, uh, Yankees. <laughs> Hey, I'm, against you. I'm here, man. This has been a beautiful meeting. Just so you know, a lot of stress moving, but um, yeah, I guess I have a couple questions about that. But for for you, signing you, off, mean, signing off. you can call me during the okay. day and stuff. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. cool, cool. Hey, I enjoyed this whole meeting. It's uh, nice seeing everybody on here. Thank you. Yeah, so well, much. we're happy to see you, bro. Take care, man. Awesome. Yeah. Chris oh, that's right. All right. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I think uh, we've got it covered. Hey, Mike, again, thank you for everything. Hey, Mike, we're going to be there in uh, Great Barrington on Monday that the after Dover. So, yeah, I saw your message. All right. So, Peter, yeah. So, yeah. I don't think I may, we may stay over probably at Vita's house, but I'm going to come with a friend of mine from Minneapolis, Chris, an old sponsee of mine. So, uh, yeah, we're going to stay over and hang out up there for Wednesday and then, cause, and then drive back Wednesday night, I think. Cause we oh, really third. cool. Okay. Yeah. So, so we'll yeah, be I'm there still waiting to the hear when we're going to move into our house, but I'll call John. I still have to call John. Uh, I mean, uh, Jack G. Yeah, so, get Jack over and everyone. Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah, yeah. and we'll see. Uh, we'll see Alex and uh, from Hudson Valley. Right. All right. Thank everybody. I've just, I've, just I've, just myself, I've just taken myself on mute. If uh, I don't know, like some people do this. Like, can we all just say bye? Thank you, oh, everybody. Yeah. We'll say bye. Just say yeah. bye. Thank bye you. Bye. Thank you, Paul. I'm out. Bye. Thank you all.